Welcome to the second section of this course making a motion detection app and its first video pre-processing video input. In this section we will build a motion detection application which will be capable of sensing motion in a video and then trigger an action accordingly. This would serve as a good introduction to OpenCV with Python and will help us to learn and understand the building blocks of computer vision. So let me demo the application which we will be building in this section. So as we can see the application triggers a text saying that the motion has been detected only when the airplane enters the frame of the camera. When the airplane exits the frame the text again disappears. In this video particularly, we will learn how to load images and videos into our app, read the video stream from webcams and display them. We will also learn about color spaces and how to change from one space to the other as there are several different available color spaces. And then we will learn how to perform elementary operations like thresholding, blurring etc on images. So that's enough of talk. Let's now write some code. So I have created a new file called motiondetector.py and now we can start writing some code. So first up I will import the cv2 library package which is an alias name for opencv. Now say that we want to read a video file which is stored in our computer and display it through this code. We can do that by the following lines of code. So this line of code defines an object for video capture and the zero which I've passed in is a parameter for the webcam. So if you want to get the video feed from your webcam, you can specify zero. If you have an external webcam, then you can specify one. But right now I want to read a video file which is stored on my computer. For that I can just type the path of the video file. So this line of code will now point to the airplanes.mp4 video file which is stored in my computer. So in the code bundle for this particular section you will find that there will be two videos airplanes and cars.mp4 I will read the airplanes.mp4 video file through my code and display it. Now in a continuous loop we will do the following. This is a very simple program to read a video file and then display it. So what is going on here? In a continuous loop, we are first reading the video file frame by frame in this line of code. This parameter contains the frame of the video which is currently being read. And this parameter is a boolean parameter which indicates whether the program was successful to grab the next frame of the video. Now we can display whatever frame which we just got. For that we can type this line here cv2.mshow. This will create a new window called demo and then display the current frame which we just read. Just to be clear when I say frame, every video can be broken down into a series of images, right? So this program reads those images one by one and displays it so fast that it seems to be a video. Next, we will write k equals cv2.waitkey. What this does is that every time we enter this loop, in every iteration of this loop, we wait for 10 milliseconds and if the user presses a key in this 10 milliseconds, we will store that key in k. Now, if that key which was pressed if that is equal to the key Q. In other words, when I press the key Q, when the video is playing, I will break out of the loop. And once we break out of the loop, 
this line will be executed which is destroying all the windows which OpenCV just created. Now we can also add some additional lines of code to handle the video. Now I am only displaying the video frame if my return value from this function was true. That is, if I was successful in capturing the next frame of the video, only then would I go ahead and show it. This exception handling comes in very useful when our video has gotten over. So in my video, during the last frame of my video, my cap.read won't be able to get the next frame because there is no frame. In that case, this line of code will help us out. Now we can also add an else saying that if I was not able to grab the frame, I will simply break out of the loop. We can now run the code which we just wrote. For that first, I will cd into the bin directory and then activate the source to enter our virtual environment. So if I type source activate, this will activate the virtual environment which we created in the last section. I can now enter the directory where we have our motion detection code. I can now call motion detector.py using python3. We were now successful in reading the airplanes.mp4 file and displaying it on the computer. Now assume that I want to grab the video feed from my webcam. In that case, I would simply pass the parameter 0 to use the default webcam on my laptop. Let's see how this turns out. I can now run the same command as previously shown. Let us now learn about color spaces and how to convert from one color space to the other. Every image or every color image is usually represented as a RGB image. In other words, every pixel in that image has three attributes called R, G and B denoting the red pixel value, the green pixel value and the blue pixel value. Now the weird thing is that in OpenCV, when you read an image or a video, it is by default read in the BGR format. That means that the blue pixel comes first and then the green pixel and then the R pixel. This is the reverse of how images are usually denoted normally. So now if we want to convert a colored image to a gray image, we can use this line of code here. So we can define gray equals cv2 dot cvt color. This function changes the color of the given frame to the given flag here. So now the flag which I want to specify here is color underscore BGR to gray. So I want to convert the BGR image to gray. So if I specify this flag in this function, I would now get the gray version of the frame which we just read from the video file. Similarly, if I want to convert the frame to a HSV format, I can use the same flag but with a small difference here. So I can now specify color underscore BGR to HSV to convert the frame, the BGR frame into a HSV format. HSV is yet another format to display pictures, although not used very normally. And one small modification here is that I'm also displaying the gray frame and the HSV frame under these two window names. So let's run this code and see what we get. So as we can see there were three windows, one for HSV, one for grey and one the normal image. You might be seeing that there was not a big difference between the grey image and the actual image but if you look closely there were some coloured elements which were greyed out. Let us now discuss some elementary image processing techniques. So before we get started, I have already converted the BGR image which we read from this file here into a grey and storing it in the variable called frame. Now inside this if condition, I have three lines of code. One line is used for blurring the image 
one line is used to apply a threshold to the image and the third line is used for dilating the image. Now to blur an image, we can use the Gaussian blur function and we can pass in the frame which we want to blur and the next parameter denotes the kernel size. Now here I've denoted the kernel size as 21 by 21. The larger the kernel size, the more intense the blur effect is. And the third parameter here is a standard deviation along the x and y directions. You can just leave it to be zero. The next function which we are discussing is called the threshold. So to apply a threshold to an image, we can use this function. So what does a threshold mean? In the case of a binary thresholding, that's the simplest type of thresholding, we can say that in the image, if any pixel value is greater than the threshold value here, in this case 20. So if in my input image, if any pixel is greater than 20, then I would set the value of that pixel to be 255, that is white. If the value of the pixel falls below the threshold or below 20, it would automatically set that to zero. So at the end of this threshold function, we will get a pure black and white image based on this threshold value. The third function which we are discussing is called the dilate function. Now the parameters of this function are the frame which we want to perform the dilating on. The next parameter is the size of the kernel, but here we can just specify none because we can just use the default kernel. And the third parameter here is the number of iterations which we want to perform on the image. So what does dilating do? Dilating is very helpful when we want to rebuild the shape contained in an image. You can read more about dilating on this link. Now here I am just showing all the three different types of image processing techniques which we performed on the input image. So let's run this and see what we get. So this is the blurred image, this is the dilated image and this is the thresholded image while this being the actual image. So now that we can load a video into the app and perform various types of mathematical operations on it, we now need to detect if any motion is happening in that video.